Good morning, everyone. How's it going? Uh, Nas here. It's a Monday morning. I was gonna go to the DMV to get my. Uh, I got my like camera card to get my license, I guess renewed or whatever. Uh, but today's some kind of holiday, so they're closed. Um, so that's that's uh, how that cookie crumbles. So uh, as usual, I'm on my way to do some laundering and uh, Hot Wheels laundering, as I used to call this. Now I'm like, uh, there's no reason to call these things anything uh, segmenty at all. Lady, please stop. You're on a highway. All right, cool. So yeah, I'm um, gonna go do laundry and stop at a couple of WalMarts and a couple of Targets, as uh, as I do. So uh, those of you who are fans of the peck hunting videos, this is your chance to uh, to enjoy that. Uh, it was still yellow. We're good. We're good. So uh, all right, let's uh, let's start with Walmart, and then uh, we'll uh, keep going with the day. Wish me luck. All right, guys. So this is a functioning ladder and roof rack. Okay. Um, this is what they're like meant for because without that you can't get up on the roof and uh, that uh, roof rack is actually being utilized for more ladders. So those that are using those whittle waddas on the TRD or the Subawu or whatever and your, your wada is about one foot long, uh, you know, I, I hate to be judgy but um, why? What's, why, dude? Stop with the whittle waddas. God. That's that's what it's for. Not for your two foot tall car with a half a foot ladder that you can't even like put your foot on. You can literally jump higher than the ladder on your little TRD man. Alright, um well, let's go to Walmart. Wow. The stock people are stocking, looking at stuff. <sighs> this looks like something. BKs. There you go, Rob. I already got you a bunch. Ram. Okay. B. Why is there B case here? It's kind of confusing. There's this car that everybody likes. I like it just fine. I'm trying to make room so I can, like, look through these, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Alright. Lots of Fiats. It's a good looking little... little peg situation here. But... I'm pretty sure I am too late to get anything of monetary value. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, the moose uh, moustache. I threw that out in the trash, guys. It is um, not a comb. And it's cheap, it falls apart. Yeah, this is the one with the gold civics, so there's not even a single one in, in this lineup, which means early bird got the worm this morning. Yep. Some good stuff here, though. I'm very surprised by this Walmart, but there's actually some stuff here. Yeah, I guess 
I guess I might get the some more of these for uh, for Rob to just have a load of them, you know. Well, that's cute. <sighs> awesome. Fun to uh, go through the pegs, I gotta admit. Been a while. Nice, we have four out of uh, six of the Mini Coopers. That's lovely. What else do we have here? From the looks of it, nothing else. <laughs> All right, let's see. Gotta keep an eye out for that RX-7 from Fast and Furious 1. Like that, only Dom's car, not Orange Julius. I'll find it, I'll find it. Eventually, someday. Oh, that's kind of nice. Porsche Carrera or whatever the... All right, so let's check out. There's a fellow hunter there that actually set high back. So maybe people are starting to uh, come back around. Love it, love it. <laughs> Uh, so I did pick up that big fly situation that I no longer see. Um, I paid like retail for it, so I'm gonna wait until it's on sale. If I catch it on sale, I will pick it up and return the expensive one. <laughs> Whatever, man, you all do it. It's not illegal. There's nothing wrong with doing that. It's not damaged, I'm just saving money. Buddy. Okay, pal? Cool. Actually, like, the shelves look like they got some kind of stock. Like, there's nothing I want, but, like, it's not empty anymore. Which is pleasant to see. Alright. So, um... Uh, a surprising amount of you guys actually reached out to uh, to me when I was uh, in my videos when I was mentioning that uh, I was looking for those uh, escorts for Rob. So Rob, man, the uh, the community out here in the good old U.S. of A. At least the nostalgic community and uh, diecast department. Uh, they love you, man, and uh, yeah, at least five people freaking reached out to me, and they're like, hey, man, did you manage to find all those, uh, you know, uh, escorts for uh, for Rob? Because he only asked for two, and I found the one, and then I couldn't find the, the freaking second one for the life of me, man. Like, all through the month of January, and then, like, uh, the first week of February, but, like, some of my friends started finding them, and, uh, yeah, and they're like, yeah, man, do you still need those? I was like, well, uh, you know, it's a main line. Uh, you know, there's a super version of it. But, um, you know, like, they're not they're not really hard to find. They're not really rare, per se. Uh, but they were while I was looking for them. So um, I just want to say thank you to everyone that reached out that were like, Nas, do you still need some? because like a whole bunch of you man like i said at least five of you man <laughs> like you know for this little green escort and uh it, it meant a lot man and i think that uh that's gonna mean a lot to rob so um yeah man rob we love you bud and uh i just want to thank rob specifically my man is uh gonna be shipping out he made another um I forget if it's three or four. I know one of them's for me that I like commissioned him to do. One of the reasons is like my man didn't ask me for money, so like I, he's getting a box full of fire. Like it would have been cheaper for me to pay him for the custom, but I'm sending him some amazing stuff. I'm not gonna show you because it's all for him. Uh, if he wants to post anything on Instagram, that's on him. Please don't rob. You don't have to. I don't need any of that to uh, to be publicized. It's all for you, man. Hopefully, we'll also put some things for Monica. So, 
give me a little message, a private message. Uh, let me know if there's anything I can get for Monica because Monica's responsible for all of our connections. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, Rob, dude, you're awesome. And everyone else, he made, um, that's where I was getting to. My man made like three customs for the next Hot Wheels for Ukraine auction, which is, by the way, this is the first official kind of announcement. It's happening again in March. So you guys have by like the end of March-ish. So definitely in March. Uh, so you guys have at least three, uh, four weeks, at least. You probably have more. Uh, what's today? Whatever. We, we're still halfway through uh, freaking February. So uh, yeah, you have like a month and a half. So if anyone else who's a customizer artist, if you want to donate one or two customs for the next Hot Wheels for Ukraine, uh, auction that we're going to be doing right here on the Nostalgic Channel, as we always do, as we have been doing for the past two years since the full-scale war uh, on Ukraine started from Russia. And uh, all the horrible shit that's happening there, uh, that's all I've been focusing on my channel for the past two years is uh, peg hunting and gathering things and sending money and doing auctions. Uh, raising funds, doing toy drives, uh, donating my own stuff, my own money, my own whatever toys I had that uh, I can spare, uh, clothing, all sorts of stuff. So if any of you want to donate a custom that you made, uh, I really am planning on doing... Hold on, I got a shift here. This time around, I'm planning to do uh, customs heavy. So... I want to do mostly customs for this auction. There is, there's still going to be some fun things like supers and some chases and some hard to find stuff, but I really want it to be customs and I already have at least three or four people already. I already have some customs waiting and a, a couple of people are making some and we're waiting for uh, Rob Stubbs to uh, uh, be shipped over the uh, pond there. <laughs> Which I'm super excited about Rob's stuff because last time his stuff went up there. We're also going to have, again, we're going to have more stuff from uh, uh, Joe's Rush Shop. And uh, I believe we're also going to have some stuff from Steve, uh, Miniature Mustangs, and a couple other guys. So uh, I'm not saying their names because I'm not sure yet uh, if they're going to come through or not. But there's a lot of people that are interested. And um, oh yeah, History, uh, History Through Diecast, he's sending a whole bunch too. So yeah, we have a really good response. So... If you're a customizer and you would like to have some of your customs in this, that would be awesome. Imagine having an auction, kind of like whatnot style, but from multiple different customizers. Plus, all the money you spend is going to Ukraine. It's going to help volunteers there. Um, so, guys, this is your first official announcement. You have uh, at least a month. You have a <laughs> okay. Let's just say you have three weeks. By the end of that three weeks, make sure you mail something. But you have at least a month, though, to do that. So really far out, you know, uh, good heads up for you. So you have time to make stuff. You have time to do whatever. Um, I would really appreciate that. People of Ukraine would appreciate it. And we've already raised uh, over the two years. We already sent a little bit over $10,000, which I'm super proud of. And um, huge thanks to Chris Sheets, Ghostbusters Quick Response Unit 13A who's always been my right-hand man at these Hot Wheels for Ukraine auctions. And uh, I'm just incredibly, incredibly blessed and happy and amazed by the uh, diecast community and the nostalgic community for coming through and doing this. Because as you guys know, there's a lot of issues with funding going to Ukraine now. Uh, we lost some more ground recently in February. In, f in fact, a few days ago, we lost Avdivka. Um, but, uh, you know, Ukraine's still fighting, man. We're shooting down their planes. We're taking care of business. There's, uh, on average, 1,000 Russians uh, going to meet their maker daily. That's a lot. Um, that's not to, uh, you know, uh, minimize or take away from Ukrainian losses. We're losing a lot of soldiers as well. But nowhere near as, uh, as much as Russia's losing. So um, that's not what we're, what we're here about. Just wanted to make that quick announcement. Uh, we're just trying to help people. We're trying to help civilians that are losing a lot. And uh, people have been donating even diecast, not for the auction, but to be sent out. Kind of like Toys for Tots, but Toys for Ukrainian kids that are orphaned, that lost their parents uh, to the war. 
you know, either their uh, mom and or dad didn't come back from the front lines or their mom and or dad were civilians and their apartment happened to be or their building happened to be one of the ones hit by uh, Russian cruise missiles uh, for no reason, uh, killing all those people. So there's horrible stories of whole families being killed. There's like really sad photos of like the family cat or dog still sitting on the rubble uh, with their whole family gone. Uh, there's so much stuff, man. Guys, I watch the news every morning. I watch a whole bunch of YouTubers. Uh, I watch um, a lot of videos from the front lines, from helmet ha cams. Uh, I get a lot of videos from my actual friends and family members that are in there. Uh, and volunteers. Some of them are volunteers too, which is amazing because the videos I get, uh, you don't get on the news. You don't get even on YouTube. Like, I've seen some horrors, guys. So... <sighs> Please uh, come through this time. We, I really, really would appreciate it. Uh, people of Ukraine would really appreciate it. If you guys, if you're an artist, donate some Hot Wheels. Uh, if you can't donate anything, please show up for when the auction happens and bid on some of these um, customs and whatever else we're gonna be offering. I always put, up, put aside at least $300 for these auctions because there's so much amazing stuff. Um, that uh, that comes through that like the, the cus I collect customs so I usually drop at least $300 on these things and uh, knowing that that money is going to Ukraine um, is it's a good feeling so you're not just throwing money away on somebody to uh, you know uh, build up their little personal pockets and stuff like that nothing wrong with that either but uh, something about like your money going to a good cause and you get something amazing that you want it's like a double it's a two for so um, heads up on that <laughs> so yeah thank you guys thanks to everyone that's always been participating in this stuff thanks to all the customizers and artists that have always been donating uh, customs and their art for these things and huge thanks to everyone that always bids and buys things uh, from these auctions because that's the most important thing is to raise funds so um, yeah I'll keep I'll keep talking about this I'll make like an official video where I'm in my office and you know I'll discuss everything and go over the rules again uh, this time I'm gonna try to like really talk about this often so uh, get get ready for that on my channel and um, there's still reviews there's still all that coming uh, I'm actually review reviewing a bunch of stuff from um, um, diecast creepo and Lana uh, from Vic and Lana Vic is diecast creepo you can buy a whole bunch of diecast there um, and Lana is on Instagram as Mustang Queen. I buy a bunch of stuff from both of them. They also donate a bunch of stuff for the channel. Like half of the stuff I review on my channels donated by them, by diecastcreepo.com, by Vic and Lana. And uh, those things uh, I don't keep. <laughs> like I review it, then I repackage it, and then I send it to... Uh, I either send them to Ukraine, depends on what they tell me they want me to do with it. I either put it in a box and send it to Ukraine to be given to orphans, like I mentioned before, or I put it up for the next uh, Hot Wheels for Ukraine auction. So I already have a nice little pile of beautiful collector grade things and Hot Wheels and Supers. Anyway, uh, yeah, Lana actually donated a bunch of kids clothing the other day. We met up at the flea market. She brought a whole bunch of new clothing for kids. And uh, so, yeah. Um, shout out to them because they've been coming through lately a lot and um yeah more on that in future videos right now i'm gonna go do laundry because i'm not rich and uh, my laundry and dryer are done expletive deleted uh they're okay but they can't handle like heavy loads so i live in a house that's over 100 years old so uh, i have to be careful with how much i do it enough of that you don't need to know more than that so i'm at a laundromat right here that's where i go and when i'm in there i go to that target that's right there so that's why I call it Hot Wheels laundering. So <laughs> let's uh, let's do that, and I'll see you at Target after I fill up the uh, washing machine. Okay, let's go. Bye. All right, guys. I'm uh, I'm wearing uh, laundry day chic sweatpants, Christmas cozy socks, a dirty hoodie that actually needs to be in the laundry, but too late now. <laughs> So yeah, uh, Target opens in about one minute. Let's go see what's in there. Probably nothing, but we might find a five super treasure hunts. So again, uh, quite a liberating feeling when uh, you're no longer like a daily pick hunter, be it for YouTube or for personal collecting needs. Like, 
I don't know. It's hard to explain, guys. Um, I know I've uh, done this before where I've done like a two-week challenge. That was at the height of when I was pike hunting every day. I was jonesing for it like crack. But uh, I did a two-week challenge. I think like five people took the challenge. Uh, maybe one other guy actually was successful. Uh, and uh, everyone else, some people tried, which is great. Some gave up. Uh, like one week into it or a couple of days into it but uh, it was a fun little um, you know uh, experiment personal experiment for people to uh, experience to learn about themselves so I recommend that uh, you guys do that <laughs> no one's gonna do it though it's not easy especially if you're uh, addicted to this sort of thing all right, well, we see a U-boat. I do see a dump bin. Cool, let's see what's going on here, guys. Oh yeah, this is like entrance to pegs video. I haven't done one of these in a while. Wait, did I just walk past the Hot Wheels? I did, shame on me. <laughs> okay, so yeah, nothing, nothing fresh. Nothing freshy freshy. Uh, we don't really have any premiums either here. Well, that was uneventful. <laughs> oh guys, um, I just made a video reviewing one of these and uh, talking about how much it damages the packaging, how uh, all this recycling stuff is BS, like um, my boy Cameron even brought this up, he's like, if it's glossy cardboard, it's not recyclable. So yeah, it'll biodegrade, but it's definitely not recyclable. So all this green stuff is like, okay, there's no plastic. <laughs> uh, also, um, that's this stuff that's made out of an egg carton. Um, I made a video on Shelby Street diecast. I made a bonus video where I actually soak this stuff in water overnight to see if it actually like, you know, absorbs water and falls apart. So that's a fun one. Um, but yeah, uh, can't recycle the cardboard. Um, oh yeah, and the windows, they're made out of recycled, uh, it says it somewhere where it's like 50%, there we go. Uh, a minimum of 51% certified plastic. So uh, this plastic was recycled. So the plastic is actually a little smoky. It's not like clear. If you look at the some of them, like the plastic is either black like that, blacked out, or it's uh, it has like a smoky tint to it. So it's like recycled plastic. <laughs> so it kind of looks weird. So yeah, these things are very questionable. Um, check out that video on Shelby Street diecast. Uh, I think you'll like it. Uh, is this the one people want? The porch? Well, it's right there. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I also have that video up on this channel, Nostalgic, but um, it's not... Uh, it doesn't have that end piece where I soak the, the foam, the paper foam. But in any case, it's getting some good views. People seem to be enjoying it. Um, oh, look, a chase. <sighs> two chases one chase a two chase ha 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 i'll put, i'll take this regular <laughs> all right so uh yeah with all that being said uh not much here sadly at least we saw something at walmart but uh stick around this isn't over uh after the dry cycle is over i am going to hit up a couple of walmarts uh, or one or another target i don't know something or other. Those two over there are mine. That's what's on TV. I don't know. Sarah Eggenberger. Okay. That's enough of this place. Ugh. Yeah! Adjusting the hat after pushing record. Awesome. All right, how's it going, uh, guys? I'm done with the uh, laundering. And uh, now I'm on my way to uh, the Neshaminy Mall Target and the Neshaminy Mall Walmart. We're gonna see what's going on there. And uh, literally that's 
the only reason. Sorry, I, I was like, "Hey, how's it going, everybody? Oh, hey, how's it going? Hey, how, hey, how's it going, guys? We're going to uh, bag hunting. Yeah." Sorry. Um, I'm literally not making fun of anyone. I'm just goofing around, which is usually what I do. But people take it personal because they see it. They see the the funny, and because they're so vain. They think the song is about them, don't they, don't they, don't they, you're so bad. Yeah, what's going on in that truck? What's, what's up, bud? What's going on, buddy? That's a good thumbnail. Oh, yeah. And I'll put myself, like, on the left side here, doing, like, that open mouth thing, you know, like, what? I'm buying stuff? What? Oh, you know, you know the the thumbnail face. Whoa! Hold on, hold on. What? Whoa! Who's ready to see what's on these pegs? Let's do it together. Let's see, anyone in here? Oh wow, no one's in here. Crazy. There's also nothing on the pegs. <laughs> yeah, Joe and Cameron, I pretty much gave up because neither of the cars you guys want are ever at the matchbox area. Whoa! Check this out, guys. Finally! <laughs> I found them myself in the wild. They're finally here. Oh my god. Oh, hey, man. Hey, now, hey, now, hey, now. Looks like there's a, one of these things here. Like, zero interest in any of those. We have plenty of those. Not much here. What did they have last here? Q case. That's lovely. We'll take a look at the um, end cap in a bit. Oh yeah, sorry, I had to come back. All right, so first of all, Brian and Susan Bender, thank you guys for sending us one of these. You found it first in your area, which is amazing. Um, to be honest with you, I honestly didn't think they would find uh, get them here, but uh, at least not this soon. Here's the Toretto house. I'm actually gonna make a little little thumbnail display here, so people can rush out for uh, FOMO and all that. You know, you gotta make that thumbnail, y'all. <laughs> Look at that, man! You got the house and you got the train scene. How cool is that? That is awesome, dude. Love it. I'm not buying a second one. I'm happy with the one I have. So, gonna good to go with that. But so happy I found it, dude. Honestly, sometimes it's just, just to find it is what it's all about. For me, anyway. Alright. Just getting that shot, you know. You gotta, you gotta get it, man. Look at that. Look at all that family right there. Family overload, yo. Love it. You never had your car. Uh, also, these, that's new. I've been watching, uh, ooh, I might actually pick that up. That's freaking awesome. I've been watching Brian of Die Castle review these, and I freaking love them, man. The scale is amazing. They're so, like, they're small. Like, Let's see, right there. Look at that. So the card almost covers the whole box there. I love that Mustang. And I love this from his review. This is awesome. This was the designed by Dima, Dimitri, uh, Ukrainian designer. Ooh, what's this? Dima, speaking of Dima. <laughs> oh man, guys, I might be picking these up. 
So what I really liked was uh, the bone shaker. I thought it looked amazing, especially out of box. This is tough though, man. These are 10 bucks each. Hot Wheels toys, buy one, get one 25% off. Hmm, perhaps. These three. Look at that lineup. And then we have this heavy hitcher and 2022 Camaro. Look at those, man. Oh, that Mustang's 100% coming with me. <laughs> That's so cool. Now, there are a couple more here. Looks like they put out a few cases, which is freaking sweet. I'm trying to see if there's any other car that I'm missing. Looks like the Dimashini is the rare one to find. That and the, the Hummer. Everything else seems to be pretty plentiful. Oh no, the Bone Shaker, there's only one per case as well. I mean, out of all of these, I only saw two Bone Shakers. So let's see if the... Um... Ah! That one's 10% off. <laughs> Nah, nah, man. Um, all right, so trying to see if paint varies. That Mustang is freaking awesome. Oh, I love this thing. All right, so as far as the tempos, they're, they seem to be identical. There's no like issues with anything or misalignments. That just looks, um, as they say, uh, on point. Alright, so, what am I doing here? I think I'm getting one Mustang, and I'm gonna have to put this away as much as I love it. I just got a little bit hyped there, so I need to uh, take it easy. So the Dimashini, um, just because he's my favorite freaking designer, other than Junimai and uh, Ryu, of course, uh, everyone loves Ryu, but... Um, I kind of want to get two Mustangs, to be honest with you. These things are... That's amazing. Amazing, dude. We don't like to focus on things because we're... Uh, the camera needs an upgrade. That's how... That's how we do. Come on. This is awesome. Alright, so... As much as I do love the Dima Shini, and it looks like the door's open, so I don't think any of the other ones have moving parts. But this one does, and they're metal, too. <sighs> I'm gonna go scan this, see how much these are. And uh, then we'll go. Man, your boy Nas has serious addiction issues, guys. I wish these boxes weren't ripped up. I would, uh... I'm definitely taking one of these boxes. Just want to pick a good one. If they didn't rip that flap open, that would be great. Bastards! Okay, so there's really no end caps with Hot Wheels, so that's about all we're gonna show you guys. This is what's going on here with the Transmorphers. This guy. Transmorphers. Hi guys, how's it going? Um, oh, I'm not sure how I'm going to try that. No, oh, these are still around. That's interesting. Han! Alright, so I'm going to use that today. So I'm going to pay like, I don't know, not a lot. I'll let you know in the review. What? They're for my nephew. Okay, guys, so, uh, yeah, I definitely got four. <laughs> I got four of those with the display case. Um, I asked at the register, I was like, is that all right? They're like, I don't, I don't care. So, uh, considering I got, like, half a case, <laughs> you know, might as well get the case. Uh, there's two more cases there on the shelf. Um, so, yeah, I'm actually excited about these. These are only about seven-something each. So with my 11 something dollars discount, like that cost me like, I don't know, all four of those. Uh, I need to look at the receipt. 
uh, let's see, about 15 bucks, about 15 bucks for all four of them. So I'm happy with that. That's because I've been, you know, saving the target circle thing or whatever. I'm sure many of you will be like, Nas, you could have saved even more by using some other target thing. Uh, I know there's something else. I need to look into that. But um, to be honest with you, I was not expecting to be buying these. I wasn't expecting to buy one. But when I saw that Mustang, I had to have it. And then, like, I remember uh, Brian again from the Die Castle. Guys, check him out. Like, he reviews Die Cast. He has no, like... Uh, particular thing he reviews. He loves die cast. He loves cars. Uh, he has tons of them. Different scales, monster trucks, regular Hot Wheels, rare, hard to find things, blue card stuff. Like he's into all of it. So um, I'm not at all like, you know, I'm just shouting him out because I love to watch his videos. Him and snakes, the cakes, the snakes, his cat. Like um, I, I love his videos, bro. He's just a genuine good dude. He's all about collecting. He doesn't like necessarily resell. He doesn't. He doesn't resell. He doesn't really trade, I don't think. Um, I mean, if he does, I'm sure it's on like rare exceptions. But um, yeah, he just likes to collect, man. He has uh, nothing to prove. He just does it for the love of it. And that's what I love about him, man. My man just uh, enjoys have, uh, having his collection. He enjoys sharing it in his videos. He loves to, uh, sometimes he'll take stuff apart to show you like what it's made of. Sometimes he'll customize things. He just does all sorts of crazy stuff, man. And I love that. I love that about his videos. I love that about him and cakes. So um, shout out to you guys again. Um, and I told you guys before, I don't shout out just anybody. If I shout you out, that means that I actually genuinely like you or your channel or what you stand for or what you're showing. And Brian's definitely on the top of that pyramid for just quality people, true collectors, I should say. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, he's the one. His, it's him. I blame him <laughs> because I bought these. Um, on TV, you can't really tell, you know, the, um, the scale. So I thought that these were those, um, there's a bigger scale of these, uh, I think, right? And uh, there's a bone shaker also, and that's what I thought these were. They're like three times bigger. They're almost like um, 124 scale. These are small, man. Um, like I was actually amazed, man. Like, sorry for saying, man, I'm excited, dude. It's not every day you find something that you're like, oh, that's so cool. And uh, yeah, so I was just gonna get the Mustang, but uh, okay, slow down now, slow down. You're too excited, chill, chill. Serenity now. We're shifting, we're filming, we're talking about stuff, we're excited, we're hitting squirrels and dogs and old ladies. Oop, oh, that was a crunchy old lady. <laughs> she's okay, she's okay, guys, she's okay. Um, so yeah, I saw him review the uh, the Dima car, not the Dimashini, the uh, the the other one, the drift whatever, and the bone shaker. The bone shaker is exquisite. The chrome and the blue and the freaking deco on it, amazing. So he did a little bit of a review on that, and I was straight up just like, that's so cool. But like, I don't collect it. You guys know me, man. I struggle with accumulating things. But whatever, man, if I like it, I'm just, that's just what I collect, man. If it makes me happy and this, this is definitely doing that. So I'm going to be doing a review on this as well. So he, he keep an eye out on this. I'm going to open all four. Why? Why is this person that just pulled out of this freaking parking spot? Why are you driving? And we're back. Let's go to Walmart. All right, there's Walmart that we're on our way. I just wanted to finish my thought. Uh, so basically, um, yeah, thanks Brian for showing those off and that's the thing about uh, like reviewers and like youtubers if they're actually showing something that they like it's it's almost infectious you know what I mean <laughs> so and uh, I really was not like planning on doing this but uh, I picked those up and good thing I had a little discount so no big deal so um, <sighs> this dude was like walking straight at me what the f anyway I'm the one who's distracted and everyone's like in sleepy town. It's so weird. Anyway, um, I like what I just bought. 
Let's see what's in here. Hi. <sighs> Gotta catch them all. I was just gonna like film her coffee stuff and, and say like this employee is ready for the day and then she popped up and I'm like uh oh <laughs> okay be surprised if there's no one in here I'm very surprised it's almost always a dude here but then again I am here quite late oh look see like that's what I'm talking about see Robert like for a month there's nothing and then it's it's an unlimited amount of everything Especially the mainline stuff. So there you go. Now remember, these were like super hard to get. Remember, these HKS trucks were crazy hard to find. I guess everyone's just getting the Skyline and the... Um, yeah, even the Porsches are left behind. So everyone's getting the Skyline and the Civic. Group Fantasy... There's Maggie's favorite. Customer service. Oh, damn. So there you go again. You got your full set uh, restocked. So yeah, patience. Sometimes your patience has to uh, hold you for at least, you know, a good month or so. But uh, it all shows up. <laughs> oh. hmm. no, this one is. All right. I know it. Bazooka Joe. Okay. Cool. Once there's a uh, kids in the aisle. I'm in exile. <laughs> Hot wheels are for kids, but I, I take my leave. Good morning. <laughs> it's my boy over there. The elusive. Look at those 20 packs. Wow. Whew. All right, fellas and ladies. There's a couple of you ladies watching. I appreciate that. Thanks. Thanks, ladies. Um, okay, I need to... Uh, there we go. So, uh, I'm done. I don't think I'm gonna go to another uh, place of business. What's going on with the reverse? There we go. That was weird. Usually reverse has no issues. But, okay. So yeah, hey, we are done guys. Um, I am excited about these freaking uh, pullback things. Uh, apparently they're die cast. Apparently, like, <sighs> um, hey man, I'm an emotional person. All right, I'm an emotional guy, and if something makes me um, happy, I'm going to express this because the world that we live in is full of shit. It's full of assholes and a bunch of narcissist motherfucking bitch ass losers. There's a lot of those around. Um, so when I'm actually experiencing something positive, something um, nice, I like to enjoy that feeling, you know what I mean? So that's why I'm so excited about these pullbacks. I have no idea if these things are rare. I have no idea if any particular model is expensive. If there is a chase, it would be nice to know if there's a chase for these. I doubt there is. If there is, let me know in the comments below, guys. But, 
Yeah, it's rare these days for me to get like this positive rush of something, of a thing, of an inanimate object. You know, you guys know that like uh, I've been influenced by minimalism quite a bit. And that's not easy for someone who's also an addict and a collector. So balancing all of those things um, is not easy. But I got to say, though, as far as my collecting goes, yes, I started kind of collecting a little more, mostly 164 mostly uh, collector grade stuff mostly because I'm addicted to whatnot now uh, so uh, <laughs> a little uh, cautionary word of caution if you go to whatnot be careful if you do be smart I tend to still be good with it I have a limit of what I'm allowing myself to spend on there and uh, I never go over it well sometimes I'll go over the limit but um, I try to like keep in mind that sometimes stuff on whatnot and it's an auction it goes up over what it's actually valued at you can actually get it on eBay cheaper people just get a little bit too excited with that bid button because it's so easy to just keep sliding it like I've seen people drop so much money like five times the amount something's worth people were just throwing that out and then writing thank you thank you you know to the seller i'm like no no the seller should be thanking you uh they just uh spent five dollars on that and you spent 50 uh so thank uh the seller should thank you uh so uh but in any case yeah i try to uh snipe those good deals you know like for example at the other day i just got the uh the golf livery 510 dotson wa uh, not wagon just dotson the rlc uh got that for 35 bucks um, I think because I bought something else, the shipping on this was like 36 cents. So that was a good deal. Uh, Steve Miniature Mustangs was there in the, in that bidding thing. Uh, so Steve, thank you. He actually <laughs> messaged me. Anyway, uh, yeah, Steve, thank you for not upbidding me. <laughs> I appreciate that. That was definitely for my collection. And uh, yeah, I sold my last one at the Hot Wheels for Ukraine auction. So uh, I no longer had one and I kind of regretted that one. That one in particular, I really liked the Golf Livery 510 Bluebird. Uh, so anyway, happy to have that back in my collection that's on its way. So that made me happy. And a couple other things that I've picked up, you know, over the um, uh, span of uh, about a month and a half since I kind of went back, went to whatnot, started an account, got approved to actually sell so I might try to uh, raise money for Ukraine that way down the line uh, but like I told you before we have a new auction happening soon um, okay guys we have a new sorry there was another p5 uh, protege we were both looking at each other like uh, <laughs> I love that man I love that about these cars these little p5s anyway as you guys can tell I'm passionate about a lot of things and uh, I like to uh, talk about them. So, um, yeah, where was I? So yeah, the pullbacks made me happy, man. That's why I'm so excited. That's why you can tell that like I'm in a good mood now and I'm gonna go get a bunch of stuff done. I already got some laundry done. I got some things I gotta take care of for my actual job. Do that for uh, a good eight hours or so. Uh, then I'm gonna make a review video on these pullbacks, edit that. I'll make a couple other videos, go for a walk. I've been up since 4 a.m. with Maggie. Uh, we went for a couple mile walk. We're trying to uh, be healthy. I gained uh, a bit of weight back since uh, my cat Houdini passed away. Uh, that kind of tends to happen sometimes with tragedy. And um, yeah, so um, just uh, doing a lot of things, trying to stay busy. Uh, remember guys, my uh, peg hunting videos these days are more of a like a out in the field podcast where I kind of vlog and talk about different things while I while I go peg hunting. Um, a lot of people just cut it cut it all down to a quick like let's go to this store, let's go to this store, which is cool. I'm not trying to encourage people to do what I do. Um, this is just what I do. <laughs> uh, if you want to make money on YouTube, you don't want to be doing this. You want to be uh, getting quick store to store, peg hunt to peg hunt, look at the pegs, 
find some supers, find something good, put that on the thumbnail, do that face, and uh, you're good to go. You'll make money. Um, what I'm doing, uh, it's just mostly for people that find my channel and find my talking interesting for one reason or another. Oh wow, those trucks almost collided. That was fun. So yeah, uh, that's how it goes, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so yeah, I encourage all of you, if you're a YouTuber and you're making videos, try to spread joy a little bit. Try to share uh, try to share your emotions when they're positive. A little more of the positivity. I'm not saying pretend or act. People can see right through that. Um, the YouTubers I watch, uh, that's why I was shouting out Brian earlier, they're, sh they're showing their emotion for real. They're showing what they're into. They're excited about what they're showing. None of it's about, you know, I want to be a big-ass YouTuber and make lots of money. That would be nice. That would be great. But that shouldn't be a reason because YouTube is not an easy place to uh, to go up on if you're genuine and if you're just kind of doing long form stuff, um, you know. So it's good to kind of uh, intercut in between that for uh, for YouTube success. Uh, for me, I've tried a little bit to stick to the algorithm to uh, do a bunch of stuff, and I definitely started growing. Uh, I definitely was getting, you know, a couple of thousand uh, views per video after like a day or two. Um, some some of my videos are like 20, 30,000 views, uh, which is awesome. But um, yeah, those videos are kind of hard to do because you're kind of not necessarily doing what you want to do. You're making a show for the viewer and you have to kind of like frankly a lot of people just kind of lie <laughs> to get the views because once your one video is out it's it's done and over with once it got its uh, peak of views and a week or two goes by it the views trickle down to like zero after a few months so once your video's out you need to just forget about it and you know maybe answer some comments as you get them just to uh, keep your audience and uh, you know which I actually love the interaction that's my, one of my favorite parts is just to talk to viewers uh, that aren't trolls <laughs> but yeah man um, it, you know that that's all I'm basically saying is uh, just be careful with that YouTube stuff man um, don't uh, you know don't expect to be a success millionaire uh, from making like honest good content, you know So um, you might though I don't know. I enjoy making videos. My whole thing is I really love to make videos even if they're stupid or boring um, You know, I just like to point my camera at things not necessarily at myself like I am now Like I'm just rambling randomly right now. You guys can probably tell but uh, these are the kind of videos I watch man like, I love when people just ramble and talk about their life, talk about their thoughts, their opinions about stuff. Just random shit that you would talk about with your friend, you know? Like, as you're driving, you guys are, like, just talking about random BS. So, that's the videos I like to watch. So, that's kind of the videos I like to make, you know? Just kind of off the cuff. Here I am, you know? Uh, that's about it. Yeah, man. So yeah, sometimes I give you advice, sometimes I take you on a hunt, sometimes uh, I talk about some assholes, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes uh, I buy some things, sometimes I'll heavily talk about minimalism and getting rid of stuff to make your life better, which I did. I got rid of a lot of my crap that was just cluttering the house. I'm so happy I went on that journey. Those of you that were there for those videos, uh, some of you were inspired and were, uh, you know, cutting down on things as well and getting rid of things. Um, and, you know, like, I, I started with all of this stuff about three years ago, man. Um, when, uh, when minimalism was really, like, on my soul and in my heart. Um, I was watching a couple of YouTubers, I was reading some like uh, stoicism books and stuff like that, so I was really questioning my collecting habits and why I'm, you know, why I was just kind of like grabbing everything and just going nuts with the whole FOMO BS and 
all that stuff. So I got rid of a lot of that crap that was meaningless to me. That was, yeah, it's cool, but that's that shouldn't be the reason for your collection just because something's cool. A lot of shit's cool. Most shit that's for sale is cool because it's for sale. It's meant to be cool. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and I decided that, man, if I can't display it, if I can't look at it, I, I don't want it, you know? And that, that's not what I'm telling you to do. I'm actually, I never tell people what to do. I only, tell, I only tell people what I do or what I'm doing or what I intend to do or why I do things. Uh, some people get inspired and do the same thing. And uh, right now, actually, uh, I'm kind of happy to watch a bunch of YouTubers are starting to uh, question their collections. And I'm like, oh man, I, I went through this like three years ago. Now I'm in a happy place. And like I'm watching people like, yeah, I don't want all these Hot Wheels anymore or main lines. Uh, I kind of want to collect more of the collector grade. Um, you know, I only collect the castings that I want or castings that I love, you know, of like cars that I'm into. Uh, people are like uh, weeding down their collection, you know, getting rid of things that they were like, why did I even buy this? Like, like I said, like, yeah, that's cool, but why did I buy that? You know what I mean? Um, so that makes me happy because people, I feel like people were kind of getting um, a little bit carried away with collecting, especially with Hot Wheels. People were kind of like just doing what the YouTubers they watched were doing and that's kind of something I noticed at least five years ago when I was when I started to like kind of hang out with a, a, a particular Hot Wheels collecting click and uh, I started watching what they were doing and like all of that and I started making kind of videos observing them and kind of like uh, analyzing their behavior and learning from that behavior and trying not to be that way. Uh, kind of paid for that a little bit. Some of them got a little butt hurt and uh, tried to do a little cancel culture on me, man. That was hilarious, man. Some of them hurt my feelings, man. I lost some friends and a lot of people are like still kind of weird about it. But uh, it, it doesn't matter to me, man. I know I'm on a path of the righteous. <laughs> I know I'm on a good side. I'm on. I know I'm on a positive path. I always have been. So people that are butt hurt are just people that saw themselves in what I was talking about, even though I wasn't particularly talking about them, but they saw that what I was saying kind of portrayed, you know, it, it, they could relate to what I was saying, so they got offended by it, because it was like, don't judge me, even though I'm like, who are you? <laughs> I don't know you, I don't know, you're butthurt because you're simply butthurt, because you didn't like what I said, because truth hurts sometimes, you know what I mean, guys? So anyway, so that's all that bullshit's over. I could care less about some of those people. And, um, you know, now just watching people weeding down their collections, kind of going the minimalist route without doing the whole minimalist thing. People are just realizing, like, why? Why are my walls clad with stuff that I don't even particularly like? You know, like, like people would be, for example, you know, collecting Ferraris, right? So they're all about Ferraris. And then one day they notice, like, why do I have one of my walls covered in Fiats and Porsches and Lamborghinis and Ford Mustangs and, uh, you know, Ford Pintos, <laughs> you know, whatever. Like, people realize that they were, they lost control. They were collecting to collect because, like, they would go to a store and not find what they want, so they would buy something else. I totally relate to that. I do that. You know, I've done that. I don't do that a lot now. Um, I kind of did that today, but that's something I want. <laughs> I swear! <laughs> Lay off me! <laughs> anyway, so you know what I'm saying, guys? So it's really nice watching people starting to not, like, follow blindly some dumbass YouTuber who hypes up what they like, and then people kind of, like, want that feeling from that YouTuber, so they go and buy the same thing, even though that has nothing to do with them, you know what I mean? Like, they didn't give themselves some time, like, a couple days, a week, to kind of think it over. Is that really what I want also? Or am I just happy for that guy and I want to feel like that guy feels in his video or that girl, whatever. So, like, yeah, that's kind of what I'm talking about. And I realized this at least five years ago. 
and I was weeding down my stuff. Actually, I started this back when I was collecting like Power Rangers and action figures, vintage toys. I got rid of 99% of that stuff. I still have the stuff I love, obviously, in my collection. Uh, and that's the thing, man. I weeded down to what I absolutely love, stuff that I would miss. And I realized certain things that I got rid of, I missed them and I regretted a couple of things that I got rid of. Like the Green Ranger helmet, the Green Ranger dragon, um, dragon dagger, um, you know, the fancy ones. Uh, oh, and uh, there was a Green Ranger figure, I forget the company, it was like, um, <clears throat> uh, 3D or something like that, I forget. Uh, anyway, it was really nice. Like, his uniform was, like, green cloth. It was very fancy. I think they go for about 150 on eBay right now. But, um, anyway. So, there's a couple things I regretted. But I realized that, yeah, I did regret some things. But most things, no. And that's what I, um, those of you who are watching and care about this sort of thing. And maybe you're feeling this way uh, for yourself. You're kind of like, ah, oh, you know what? Maybe I have way too much crap. I'm not telling you what to do, but if you're having thoughts about this stuff, and I don't care, you can have a house full of crap, it doesn't matter. But hey, you can always start a whatnot and make some money. You sure could. If you have a ton of crap, uh, that's a good way to get rid of stuff and make some money and then get more crap that you really want, which is, that's what you should, that's what you should do. I'm telling you what to do, bitch. Bitch, do what I say, motherfucker. So, um, <laughs> what I recommend you guys do is something that I've done um, when I had too much crap. Put stuff in bins, put stuff in boxes. Most of your stuff, if not everything. See how it goes. So, take everything, your whole collection, everything, maybe except certain things that you're like, you know, those couple of things are never leaving, I don't give a shit, I love them. Fuck you, Nas, don't tell me what to do, you know. So, um, <laughs> oh, Sunflare, JJ, JJ Abrams, Star Trek, ah, Flare, um, Squirrel. So yeah, put stuff away into bins, into boxes, stuff you can't see for at least a month, okay? So at least for a month, guys, put everything away and just live your life as it is. Don't sell anything, don't get rid of anything, you still have all of this. But for a month or maybe two, if you want to be hardcore, maybe, you know, until until the summer comes, uh, put everything away. And then after that time passes, think about it. Think about like what's in those boxes. Do you remember? And then maybe if you want, go through those boxes and then just kind of weed out the things that you kind of miss, the things that were on your mind while it was gone. You're like, oh man, I kind of wish that was still up there. Take that out and leave it. The rest of it? I sold. That's what I did. Uh, everything that I forgot about and I was questioning what's in that box, why do I have this, I got rid of guys. Um, I sold it at the flea market, I sold it on, uh, not on eBay, uh, oh yeah, most of it I sold at the Hot Wheels for Ukraine auction, uh, or to my friends, I just straight up reached out to some of my friends that collected Power Rangers or whatever, shout out to Leland retrospect customs um, <laughs> um yeah just uh got rid of a bunch of stuff and not even to make money i didn't make money off of any of that stuff i just wanted i wanted it gone man it was cluttering up my thoughts um my collection owned me and that's why nowadays i have a slogan on my channel um own your collection don't let it own you there you go i got it own your collection, don't let it own you. And that's, my collections owned me, man. And uh, they occupied my mind, my thoughts. I was thinking about how to get the next thing. I had fear of missing out. I kept hunting, I kept driving, going places. I kept wasting my time on, um, on the collection and shit that I liked. Where originally my collecting and everything started to get away from bullshit, to get away from the insanities of the world. That's that was the point of me going into my collection room is to get away to unplug to look at all this cool stuff remember the memories for nostalgia stuff like that you know what i mean so uh once it stopped being that i was done man so um yeah with that being said guys uh i'm gonna call it uh call it a a video call it a podcast call it whatever you want 
Just don't call me Shirley. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully some of this resonates with you guys. Um, I'm going to go uh, to another store, buy some more food for the house and everyone I care for. And um, yeah, I can't wait to, uh, to do this review later on in the evening today to uh, show you guys uh, what those are all about. Because I'm excited about those, so keep an eye out for that. Alright guys, this was um, a very long podcast in which I peck hunt uh, and drive around and do, do daily chores like laundry and buying food. Oh yeah, I got raw chicken in the trunk. All right, I gotta go. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. Live long and prosper. Um, how did, how did uh, the saying go? Um, own your collection. Don't let it own you. Think about that. Peace and love, everyone. Collect what you like, bro. Brah!